be a benefactor. Once they have the power to heal, once they have the power of all that God gives, they not only have that power to bless, but it's a two-edged sword. And when they begin to speak in ways that are destructive, they destroy like nobody else can destroy. You know, sometimes people will come to me with an idea and they'll kind of say, well, I was thinking maybe we ought to do this. And all I got to do is look and laugh. Just smile. You know, and it, it's it ended. They won't even finish what they're saying. Why? Because they have so much respect for me. But if it's a joke to me, I've killed it totally and completely. And uh, I trust that if I do that, and I want to be careful because I realize more tonight than ever before. But if I do that, I want to recognize the strength that I have as a blesser also gives me the power to devastate things. And I can cause somebody's dream to be that which is totally ended. I can cause somebody's thing that they want to promote never to get off of the ground. And hopefully I do it because I assess it for what it is. And I'm simply speaking out of, you know, what is my view from understanding and knowing. But I have the power to devastate simply by the attitude that I have. There's times when people prophesy and they'll look at my face to see how Brother George is taking it. There's times when people will do different things and they'll look and see how I respond at a testimony or something else. And just as I respond, I either promote or I destroy. I either bring my thought in that in harmony with what's happening or I devastate what's happening. And I speak that as an illustration. As you grow and as you prosper in the Lord, you're going to find that you have the power to bless. You have the power to encourage. You have the power to strengthen. You have the power to heal. But what about the blind side of your Christian experience if you're not careful? What about the ability that you have to curse? And I don't mean it in its most devastating form. I mean it in ways that sometimes are just, oh, perhaps it's relative as far as the degree. I think about today at the paychecks for the, some that are working in the ministry didn't get to me today. And I made a phone call to my wife and I said, where's the paycheck? And she said, I was tired this morning and they can get them tomorrow. And I said, well, they don't want them tomorrow. They want them today, you know. And uh, nothing severe, but since I'm in this message, I can see how that we can destroy in little ways. And maybe just to a little degree, maybe just a little bit. And sometimes in being irritable, we as Christians, we destroy. Sometimes in the body of Christ, we bring to naught. Sometimes among the people that we have fellowship with, we ruin what God wants to do in their lives. Sometimes it doesn't take, you know, a, a standing in the middle and saying, I curse you and I wither you and I cause you to dry up and I cause you to be destroyed. But sometimes it's only withholding a word of encouragement. Sometimes it's withholding a word of commendation. Sometimes it's just a word that can bring blessing. And it, it, it's, a, it's a thing that I, I, I don't want you to get off balance on. I'm sure that when people are wrong, they're not meant to be commended. I'm sure that there's a ministry of leadership that God has ordained. And I'm not trying to distort what God wants to be said tonight. But I want to say to you that the biggest problem in the church has not been the devil. He's been defeated about 2,000 years ago. But we're able to curse what we love. And we're able to destroy what we love. And the stronger that we find the kingdom of God and the greater the power of God moves in our lives, we're going to find that if we don't get elected to the position we want, we can curse the whole thing and it goes nowhere. And if we don't get the recognition we want, we can curse the whole thing and it won't move. And if we don't see the thing go our direction, we can curse the whole thing and it will never get off the ground. And if we don't have what we want, we can see to it that nobody participates and we hold back our spirit and what we think is hindered by the devil is not hindered so much by the devil but it's kingdom people who become powerful and you have the power to heal you have the power to bless you have the power to encourage you have the power to strengthen and the more you grow in God the greater you come into God the greater your ability to minister the more the gifts of the Holy Spirit the 
more the leadership qualities manifest themselves in your life, the more credible you become, the more people recognize you, the more people appreciate you, the more people say that that's a woman of God, the more people that say that's a man of God. Remember, not only have you had the power to bring forth good, but now you have the power to pull down everything that you will. And if you're not careful, the devil will use you to destroy what God wants to establish. The power to curse is given to a believer. Jesus said it. He said, if you want to, I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, did this to which is done to the fig tree, wither it. You're given the power to wither. And I would someday, somehow, the Holy Spirit would give me the ability to write a book. And I think that if I wanted to write a book, book that would be most important to my mind today would be a titled the power to wither how that it's given to believers the power to wither how it's given to those who grow the power to wither which is given to leaders half of the things that happen in politics is the power to wither people get into office because they wither somebody people get into office because they cut down somebody people get into office half of it is not by what they do positively it's half of it done by what they've been able to burn everything around about them stand on somebody else and be able to wave as the top dog in the whole pack and what happens they arrive why because they've been good at withering but we as the body of Christ, we're not using the power to wither. And if we do, we are carnal. If we do, we are destructive. If we do, we are worldly. If we are doing this, we are sensual, not knowing the mind of Christ. God has called us not to wither, but God has called us to heal. God has called us to set free the captives. God has given us the power to destroy the works of the devil. God has given us the power to minister to those that are broken and bring them into the blessing of the Lord. In the book of Revelation, we have the testimony of a church, a church that tried those who said they were apostles and were not, and found them to be liars. And Jesus speaks about that church, but he says, in the process of your witch hunt, you withered those liars. You withered those false apostles. You cursed them in your trials. You destroyed them and exposed them, and you put them out of business. Nevertheless, thou hast lost thy first love. You can't curse and love at the same time for long. It is not long when you are cursing, you lose the love. Whether it's talking about a friend or your wife, how many people curse their wives? Oh, not outward, but just simply you don't do anything right and you this and you that and you something else. And what happens? They're losing the love. You can't wither somebody and still love them. You're going to lose that first love. You can't wither your church and still love it. The best way to get out of your church is begin to see all of its faults. The best way to get out of your church is see all of its failings and then begin to curse it with your attitude. And look at it and profess it will never amount to anything. It never will be any different. The church is prejudiced. The church is this. The church is something else. And when you get done, you will curse it. And you will bring it to a place where it will wither and dry at least for you. Until it has no benefit for you. And what happens in the process? You lose your first love. You can't tear down without losing love. You can't rip apart without losing love. You can't find and expose the things that are ugly without losing love. Every time you do it, you will find something drying up in your spirit. And what happens, you find yourself active in the ministry of cursing. And instead of coming into victory, you find that you lose the joy of the Lord that once was your strength. And who are these who really curse? They're those who have faith. In areas of their life, they walk with God. In areas of their life, they are people who are believers. I've seen people who love the Lord get together in a prayer. 
be intercessors with great cries in their heart. Oh, God, be with our stupid pastor. Be with our pastor. God, do something to him, whatever you have to do. Do whatever you have to do, God. Smite him, I don't care, whatever. But God, get a hold of him. Lord, get a hold of him. Self-righteous prayers. But what's happening in that moment, there's a withering that's going on. And they go to church the next Sunday, and they sit in the pews, and they listen, and they say, he's lost his anointing. Of course he's lost his anointing. You've cursed him all week long in your prayers. Of course he's lost his anointing. You've dried him up until there's no river there. And there's pastors today who can't get the anointing except they leave their church and go to another state and preach in a special service. And the anointing of God comes upon him. Why? Because the congregations have cursed him with their lack of confidence that God is able to make him the man of God he ought to be. This is the truth. There's preachers who are dry who end up leaving their church to go to another one. Why? Because they haven't understood what they're fighting against and they think they're fighting against the devil. No, they're fighting against carnal spirits. They're fighting against people who've grown in the Lord until they know a lot, but they second judge everything that happens. And in the process, they're turning to the fig tree and they're saying, let there be no fruit upon thee. And men are in the pulpits not able to preach. No, I'm not saying that this is all the fault. I'm not blaming the congregation for every sloppy preacher. I'm not blaming the congregation even for the fact that it happens. But I'm saying that there is a process. There's a process that happens in believers' lives. You are fearfully and wonderfully made once you're born again. Once the spirit and power of God moves in your life. And as you begin to grow you're going to find that the more that you grow, the more you have a potential also to destroy. The more that you have the ability to build, you also have the ability to pull down. There's some people who can't build and they can't pull down. They can't bless and they can't curse. They can't raise up and they can't bring to naught. But there are others that begin to find that they have wisdom, ability, power, authority. They have gifts and callings. And these people become potent in what they're able to do. But they have to learn in their doing that God has called them not to curse. He says bless and curse not so that the purpose of God can be done in the earth. Moses, God called him, anointed him. His sister, Aaron, good people of God who are full of God's graciousness began to grow until one day Moses was faced with a great time of destruction. What happened? Was it the enemy? Was it Egypt? Was it the power of Pharaoh that was going to come in this moment to destroy? No. It was the people who said, we prophesy too. We hear from God too. His sister said, I have the ability to prophesy. There we look and find Miriam. We find Aaron. We find others that look and they rejoice that they've grown a little bit. Remember, child of God, and I'm not so sure that this message applies to you tonight personally except as the information because you will keep on growing. Every single one of you will grow. And one day in your growth, you're going to find out that as God blesses and prospers you, that you've got to take heed that others or yourself, you're going to look and find how the devil comes against the church, a temptation to be critical in a destructive way, a temptation to curse and to destroy. And as a child of God, God is saying to you, bless and curse not. Bless and curse not in all of your relationships. Bless and curse not among all the people you know. Bless and curse not, not just in spiritual things. I think about one man that I like a lot. And uh, nobody knows him. He doesn't go to our church or nothing. But when you're with him and he's on the highway, he is doing nothing but saying, you stupid driver, where did you get your license from, Sears? Why don't you get that thing off the road and park it, you crazy guy, you dumb woman. I mean, if you go on a four-hour trip with him, you're wore out. 
because he spends all that time cursing everybody in front of him, to the side of him, and everywhere else. And he looks and he said, this miserable holiday, wouldn't you believe it? Cold as ice, and it's supposed to be a holiday. It's miserable. It's unbelievable. You rotten day, I can't stand you. It's his life. He doesn't mean nothing by it. I'm sure that it comforts him to a degree. Because cursing is also a movement of power. It is also a sense of worth, but it is a negative thing that comes from hell. And God has called us to count our blessings. God has called us to do good to those who despitefully use us. God has called us to believe that he's a God of great things for others as well as ourselves. There are people who really grow in the Lord. And as they grow, they become cynical. They begin to prosper and they begin to see what's wrong in the church. I feel bad when people grow sometimes because when they first come to God, they come into the house of the Lord and the place is so holy to them and the saints are so precious. And they just turn and they say, John, we should have got here years ago. I, I just feel bad. We wasted so much time. We could have been here years ago. And then they begin to grow themselves. And it's not long until they see failure. They see what's wrong. They see things that are lacking. They begin to know the scriptures. And they begin to go to Bible classes and begin to study and listen to tapes and read books and all these things. And before long, they know a little bit themselves. And you see the attitude that changes. We hear from God too, you know. Well, you know, the preacher, he's not perfect. You know, that's just, that's one of the little things that you watch. I heard somebody just the other day, you know, they said, well, you know, I, I don't agree with you on any on everything. And uh, most people don't. And I think that that's just general, that we just reserve the right to hear from God. But when people tell you that, usually they're telling you that I've been talking about you this last week, you know. <laughs> well, I don't agree with you on everything, but... Uh, and this guy, he had cut me all a big hamburger out of me, you know. Everything from the car I drive to whatever. And uh, he said, you know, uh, well, I, I don't agree with you on everything, but, you know. And um, I said, well, I heard you've been talking about me. Well, he said, no, 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 it wasn't that. But I don't agree with you on everything, but uh, no, I wasn't. But, you know, what happens is that we grow a little bit. And in growing, we begin to find out that we have strength that we have power, that we have ability. And as we begin to grow, we're going to learn something, that the devil doesn't make the church empty. These empty seats are not here by the devil. These empty seats are here by believers who curse one another, the preacher who doesn't have enough compassion, the congregation that's critical, other believers who do not bind together in God's love. We are empty not because the devil has done a thing, but we have shot our own self in the foot. We have cursed ourselves. We have sneered at one another. We've turned at each other and looked and said, that guy, he's a guy who ought not ever even to have a right to stand in the house of God or to minister or whatever. What we've done, we've cursed those around about us. That's why the church doesn't grow. The moment that we understand that we diminish not by the power of Satan, but we diminish by the power that God has given us. We have the power to change things. We have the power to rearrange things. We have the power to raise up, and we have the power to cast down. We have the power to bring somebody into forgiveness, and we have the power to see that person never forget what they've done wrong. What did Jesus say, Peter? I give you the power that whoever sins you forgive shall be forgiven. And whosoever sins you retain, they shall be retained. And I know that there's some interpretations on this. And this is not the central truth, but there is a basic truth here that when you don't let a man be released and you say to him, you've wronged me and I'm not going to forget it, he doesn't forget it either. I remember one time as a young pastor, 
My young daughter was beaten by her dad. And her brother, who was a friend to me, came and said, my daughter, my sister, can't go back home. She's only early in her teens. And I want you to go with me and take her to the juvenile home. And we did. There's black and blue marks all over her. And they put her in the home. And in that moment, this father who'd been a friend to me and I'd been a friend to him, in that moment, he hated me with a perfect hatred. He had no use for me. And his hatred was so deep that I was not released. And I felt that I could do nothing else. I felt that I was clear in my conscience. I felt it was a dangerous situation. I felt that it could be very destructive. I felt it was the best solution to just be a part of the, of the brother and to be supportive in that moment. But I'll tell you this. His hatred was that which flowed into my life. And his contempt was that which I felt in my gut. His attitude toward me was something that didn't stop at his house, but it poured into me. We have the power of affecting other people. And when we don't forgive, the other person still is hung up on that situation. You feel the pain of it, and it will work in your life. And that's why if your brother has ought against you, leave your gift at the altar and reconcile yourself with your brother because you're not free even in your spirit to worship God except somehow it gets changed or God gives grace. You see, we curse one another. From that moment on, he had been my friend, this old man. Had been a friend to me. And I'd been a friend to him. But in that moment, his blessing had turned to a curse, and I was the recipient of that curse. And there was no end to it until finally one of his sons died. And the broken man, I went to the funeral of a son that died in an accident at work. And uh, there the man just broke and cried, and I walked up to him, put my hand in his. No more fight in the man, and the thing was over. But until then... There was that which was a curse that was coming from him. And I felt it, and I felt it, and it was there. Listen, we have the power to curse as human beings. And we have doubly the power as we grow in the Lord. We have doubly the power as we become strong in the Lord. I have known churches that when people leave, they curse the people that leave. And they say, your marriage will break up. They say the devil will get you. They say that everything will go wrong. And the preacher curses the people who walk away. And God have mercy upon any preacher that curses sheep that leave your church. You better bless them as best as you can. Because you put a weight upon a man who leaves or a woman who leaves a church. And you curse them because you resent them leaving. We have not the right to do so. The Bible says bless and curse not. I've had people who come to me and said, Pastor, I know God wants me here. But that pastor, when we left, he said that our marriage wouldn't make it now. He said my wife would leave. He said everything would go wrong. And he said, I'm in the church and I know that God wants me here. And I know that God's blessing is here. But I carry that weight. I carry that thing. And I feel it when I'm sitting in church. And I feel it at home because a powerful man cursed me. Listen, when you begin to grow in God, one day we're going to learn that God has given us an inheritance and we have a stewardship and we have the power to heal or to kill. We have the power to bless or to curse and God bring us to our knees until we begin to cry out, God, I want to bless, I want to bless every chance I get and God set me free from the desire to curse. My God set me free. Sometimes little people grow and for the first time in their life they find out that they can now curse. And maybe putting another company out of business. Know that you have the power. And lusting after it. There's times competition is not your responsibility. But there are times when people feel I realize for the first time I can crush him. And there's people who are in business who have a lust inside of them. 
and other people stalk game and other people stalk human beings, but they stalk businesses and they curse businesses and dry them up and walk over the top. They have learned that the same man who can build a business can swallow up a business. And I'm not saying that there's not business rules and things that happen, but I'm saying that there is the power when you can win. You also have the power to tear down somebody else, something else, and it's an awesome power. And you better know God in that situation. There's people who never had any power in their life become a union steward. And for the first time, they find out they have power. They can put a man out or they can get a man back again. And the lust for that power, the recognition, not only can I bless, but that man's been a thorn in my side. And I'm going to finish him. I'm going to burn him. A man becomes a supervisor, and he said, I took some stuff off of that man, but I'm able now to put something on his record, and he'll never get a promotion. He'll never go anywhere. I'll see to it that he's finished. When you begin to grow, you have the power to curse. When you have the power to bless, that power is given to you. And the truth of the matter is, and I don't want to simply bog down here and talk all night, but I want to share with you, that if you're going to grow, and if you're going to prosper, and if God is going to bless you, and if God is going to promote you, then you'd better get before God and say, God, for the first time in my life, the way I look is going to affect people deeper than ever before. The way I talk is going to affect people deeper than ever before. My conversation is going to affect people deeper than ever before. And my God, I want to curse nobody. I want to bless. You brought me to bless and God help me not to curse. I ask it in Jesus' name. The plan of God is to bring you to a place of greatness deeper than you've ever known. The plan of God is to enrich your life further than it's ever been enriched. The plan of God is to give you power over all the power of the enemy. The plan of God is to cause you to prosper in all things. The plan of God is to give you the power to set before you an open door that no man can shut. The plan of God is to give you the power to say something in faith and see it come to pass. But remember half of the things that you think the devil's been doing it has been done by people who have grown a bit. And now instead of blessing, they've learned that they can do the same thing to a fig tree. They can do the same thing to a person. And they can even say to the Mount of Olives, uh, go and be removed and cast into the sea. And don't even exist anymore. And if you believe strong enough, you have the power to do this. Not that God can't intervene. As Christians, we have to learn how the devil has stymied the church. He's not done it directly. It hasn't been Egypt that has destroyed Israel. It hasn't been the devil that has caused the work of God not to grow. It hasn't been demon spirits working from without that has halted the work of God. It has been that we have had power that we haven't understood We've hurt people by withholding our love. We've hurt people by our criticism. We've hurt people by our gifts that we use in a negative sense. And if we're going to see a move of God, and I believe we will in our time, it will be that we will learn that as a person in the kingdom that we have awesome power. And just because it's God's power does not mean that it always does good. Take your Strong's Concordance, go through it and find out cursing. Find out how many times the cursing is done by God. The power of cursing, the power to destroy is God's power. The devil is a defeated foe. Deuteronomy chapter 28 tells us that if we're not obedient, that we will be cursed in the city, cursed in the country, cursed in our livestock and our cattle, cursed in our crops, scattered by whom? By God. We are a part of God. We are the body of Christ. We are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus. And if we know not what spirit we are of, we find out that Jesus does not call down fire from heaven to devour, but we will. If we don't understand that when we grow and when we come into victory, that that victory is a victory that's because of power and authority and ability, and the ability to win is also the awesomeness of being able to d devour and destroy. And so we come back to a verse and we close. Romans chapter 12 and verse 14. 
Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. You begin to understand that you have an awesome power and that you can curse. But God has called us not to curse, but to bless. The stronger you get, the more that you have that power. If anybody in the natural wants to challenge me, and it happens all the time, people often pick the pastor as a target. You leave it go. It doesn't stop that important. But yet you understand, hey, he can't do a thing. But I could make him look stupid in a minute. You could spin him around so fast that he wouldn't know what happened. Why? Because the power to bless is also the power to curse. But you make a choice. And as a man of God, the first thing you have to realize is that when people are wrong, you want to be careful that you don't curse them. Because there are people who have been hurt so bad that they never recover. There are times when people leave the church and I wish them every blessing from God. And I, I just tell them, I sure hate to see you go. But if you ever feel like coming back, you know, the door is open. We love you. There are times when I've got somebody dead to rights and I know they've lied. Sometimes I'll press it because I feel the person needs to see it. But more than likely, I'll just leave it go. Give the guy something to hide behind. Protect a little bit of his dignity. Could strip him bare. But who would cover him? When we don't forgive somebody, the heaviness of it is there. Maybe God has forgiven them, but the working of that lack of forgiveness is in their spirit and their life. And as Christians, if we're going to grow as the body of Christ, there's a truth that's in the middle of this message that hasn't been fully developed. But if we're going to grow, it's because we've made the choice to bless and not do what we could have done. We could have cursed. Nobody can bless like a Christian. But remember, nobody can curse like a Christian either. For you have power that comes from God. You have power to do things. You have the abilities that comes from being a kingdom person. Remember, bless. Bless and curse not. Stand with me in the service. Most alcoholics I know are in the cursing business. The president, every nationality, the young, the old, everything around about them. Contempt. Most failures I know are in the cursing business. The thing is, it it never affects much on the outside. It all goes ingrown. It's an infection that goes down inside. And they end up being the one who becomes cursed. But the awesomeness of the curse is people who are blessed. People who are right with God. The devastation that comes in any body of believers in the church comes with people who have credibility. People that you look at and you say, there's a man of God or there's a woman of God or there's somebody I really like in the Lord. They're the ones who can really pull something down. What they say has meaning. It'll bring destruction. As a Christian, you will always grow. At least that should be the direction of your life. As a believer, you will always become more powerful. Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. You'll have more wisdom. One day you came to the body of Christ. You didn't know anything. You didn't know anybody. And you looked and felt the glow of God. And you felt so good in the middle of it. And then God began to teach you and cause you to grow and to prosper. And you learned a bit. And you began to see things that were wrong. And I want to say that criticism can be a gift. 
To be able to see what's wrong is a gift. Some people don't have it, but it's a gift that can be perverted. The gift to see what's wrong is so that you can make what's right, should be right. I appreciate people who can be critical. But I thank God when their gift, gift is redeemed. And it can be used as an instrument to use them to accomplish the purpose of God in redemption. When the devil has a hold of our life, the ability to criticize often is shaped into the ability to curse. We walk away hurt and we walk away with leaving others hurt as well. I believe that we live in a time when God is restoring his purpose in the world. And if this is a generation that God is going to use for his praise, we will be the most powerful people that have ever been till today. And in that power, we'll have to make a choice. And the choice will be to bless and to curse not. And I trust that that will be the choice that each of you make. It is in this choice that your ugliness leaves. It is in this choice that you become beautiful. No man curses without becoming ugly. There's something ugly that happens when we do. We lose our first love. It is when we forgo the privilege of cursing and bless that God's hand is able to move in our lives. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, or if you're a backslider, I want to bless you with the knowledge that God loves you and that God's able to change your life. If you're here and you failed and you failed and you failed again, I want to tell you that you're in the midst of a people who've also failed, but God has given grace. I want to tell you that Jesus loves you and that God has a way of blessing you through Christ, his work on Calvary. And I want to give you an invitation just to leave where you're at and come and stand in the front of this church and tonight give your heart to Christ. You that are unsaved or if you're backslid, get right with God. I want you to come now. He'll deliver you from the curse. He'll set you free from the curse. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else here, a backslider, somebody who doesn't know the Lord, you can be set free. Jesus has the power to curse us, but he didn't choose to curse us. He chose to bless us. He could have withered every single one of us as he did the fig tree. And each one of us, we didn't bear any fruit. Had no more right to survive than the fig tree. But God made a choice. If you're a backslider, if you're not saved, you come right now. The songwriter said, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come. God has the power to do both. Dry up fig trees. Make mountains leave. And save the lost. He's chosen to save us. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to know basically who I'm ministering to. If you have been saved, but you've just gotten away from God, hold your hand up so I know what the situation is. If you have been saved, but okay. Thank you for listening to Night Vision with Pastor George Bogle. If you would like to support this ministry, please send your correspondence to P.O. Box 39241, Detroit, Michigan 48239. That's Night Vision.